Hi everyone. If you remember about eight months ago, I did this video on my first Arduino environmental monitor. And it worked out fairly well, but I just didn't like the way it was. It was a crude model. So I went back to the drawing board. I'm still using the Arduino Pro Mini, but um, I've done a few additions. Originally, I was using a BMP180 temperature and pressure sensor. Well, finally, Bosch released, it's kind of tucked inside the wires here, the BME280, which also does temperature and pressure, but also does humidity, all on that little tiny can, which, if I bring it real close, you can see they've actually even shrunk the package down even more. So, I love this new sensor. Um, this one's from Embedded Adventures, the breakout board, called the MOD1022. That's what I can use for testing. And... I'm also using, still using the Nokia 5110 display, but I'll show you a different one that I'm working on in a minute. I have a DS3231 real-time clock for the time that I have up here. Basically the same thing as this. Uh, you get it for about $2 on eBay. The only difference between this board and this one is you're not going to be able to see very well due to all my wires in here. But basically I stripped everything off of this except for the backup battery on the back and the actual chip itself and the two decoupling capacitors. Everything else, these two resistor networks, the 32K double EEPROM, the power light and the battery charging circuit has been removed. So I got one, two, three, four total components on it. So this way it doesn't use power from the battery to charge this, just get a regular 2032 battery. And I have no need for the double EEPROM, so to keep power consumption low, remove that as well. Um, I'm also doing data logging on here, and it has a little micro SD breakout that I got on eBay for like three bucks or so. So I got a two gig micro SD card in there, and it's actually logging to a uh, CSV file once every second, and I actually tried it yesterday, put the unit outside, and was able to graph all the information. Here's an example that I did yesterday on my spreadsheet program, and it was pretty interesting. Surprisingly, after I added this in, because this was an afterthought actually, it only pulls ever so slightly more power. Most of the power consumption is dependent upon what type of SD card you use. So if you get one of the older 1 gig or 2 gig cards, Chances are they use a lot less power than the newer ones, which are 4 gig and just came out fresh. The way they actually make the chip inside of it uses more power, so that's not going to work very well. The other uh, board I have on here, this is a um, from SparkFun. It's the fuel gauge. It's a Max 17043, and that tells me the battery percentage shown right here for my test lipo I have on the back. Now this one's giant, it's like 2000 milliamp hours. I'm sure the final unit I might have 350 to 500 if that. Because as you can tell, the battery is currently reading 93%. This has been running on this battery charge for 30 to 32 hours or so, and that's as far as it's dropped. So yeah, this battery is massively oversized. I do have the Arduino sitting in sleep mode. Uh, it wakes up once every second with a one kilohertz tone to the interrupt pin 2 to wake it up, get new time, check all the sensors, display it on the screen, log it, and then go back to sleep. And it works really well. The sleep current seems to be about 800 microamps and it pulses maybe to 3.5 to 4 milliamps. And my meter, it happens so fast and my cheap um, Harbor Freight meters have a problem picking it up. I also did try using OLED screens, whether it be I squared C or an SPI version. I like them, but there's two problems with them. Well, one definite problem, one potential problem, which I'll get to in a second. Um, the one main problem is they pull too much power. When these were plugged in and always having the display on, I was usually using about five milliamps for the amount of, L of the screen area that I had lit up. So that was too much for my power budget for this unit. The other second problem is I am trying to get this unit to work right here. It is also from 
Embedded Adventures. It's the MOD 1016 Franklin Lightning Sensor, and their part number is AS3935. I've gotten it to work a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, the only time it would actually correctly detect lightning uh, of any quantity is when I had the mic is when I had the our uh, Pro Mini plugged into the computer, and I assume it was using. Um, a ground through the USB, through the laptop, and then through Earth ground through the power conver uh, converter. So, anytime I would have this unit plugged in and running on battery power away, it would have a ton of noise on it and it wouldn't detect. It basically went tone deaf. So, I've had lightning literally strike almost over its head within about a thousand feet and it couldn't pick it up. But the second I have it plugged into the computer going through that ground, it would work perfectly fine. So, I still got to play with it a little bit. The other thing that might be the partial problem is, is using the OLED screens because they have their own weird charge pump built into the chip on glass underneath here. And when they're actually powered up, you can put your ear up to it and hear it humming. So, there might be some, electro, some EMI, some electromagnetic interference that the little tiny antenna that's actually on here was picking up. I mean, this thing listens in the 500 kilohertz band. I have no clue if this thing is putting out that frequency, but it's a possible potential problem. When I get around to it, I'm going to plug this back in using the Nokia screen because I don't think there's nearly as much EMI from this screen. You can't hear it humming. It pulls less power. So I'm hoping that the screen was causing too much interference and in making this lightning sensor tone deaf. So... When I get a chance to, I will plug this back in and give it a shot and see what happens. Another part of this project I'm trying to work on is the Nokia screens are nice, but you only get 84 lines by 48, so there isn't a lot of real estate. And if you've seen my previous video, you can see I got a little bit more information on here. I was able to utilize the screen a little bit better because now I also have heat index and dew point. Um, but I like having the 128 by 64 that I had on the OLED but it used too much power and it's too small. So I think I might have found a compromise here, but I'm still working on it. Let me slide this over here a little bit. I got a separate unit set up over here. This is a, what is it? Um, 7565 display. It's complete glass with a flex connector. It's 128 by 64. And if you order this from Dijol, you can get your own breakout board. And underneath this rubber band that's holding all my extra wires that I cut is a PIC processor that plays translation. Well, believe it or not, if you're using the UAG lib for Arduino, you should be able to directly access this screen through SPI without having to use this chip because I can't use their breakout board. That chip pulls about 10 milliamps and it's going to put me way over power budget. So, just for testing, I don't want to pull it up because... I have all the traces underneath. Let me see if I can... Yeah, you can see all the mess underneath there. I literally cut the traces that go to the SPI pins for this screen and directly connected them up to this Pro Mini so I can uh, see if I can directly interface. And I already have a sketch loaded on here. Let me steal a little bit of power temporarily on here just so I can show how it works. So, let's see here. Ground. And VCC. Can I... Okay, there's my other VCC. Kind of need some more space on this board here. So when I plug this in, now this is just powering directly. I'm not using this little chip here. You'll see it. And I have it drawing as fast SPI as I possibly can on it through the UHG settings. And it works really good. So what I have going on here, and here's a little image, I made a quick and dirty breakout board which has the nine capacitors that it needs for its own little charge pump on this chip on glass. So I want to shrink it down a little bit, get rid of this chip, and then put it onto this test bed. Get rid of the 5110 and actually use this display for the final uh, project. And believe it or not, even though this screen looks like it has at least two and a half times the display area, it only pulls an extra 100 microamps. So this this pulls about 350 to 400. This one pulls closer to 500 microamps with uh, a static display. Not with this animation, this testing animation going on. But 
with this data on there, it's maybe 500 microamps. I can definitely swing an extra 100 microamps and still not have a problem. And these pins are almost touching. That might be a problem. So I'll keep you updated on this. That's what I'm waiting for next. It, I want to get all the hardware taken care of before I make my first prototype board that will incorporate all this together. It's get this display to correctly work on over here and see if I can actually get this lightning sensor um, connected into here. If I can get those two working, then I can actually go and actually design a breakout board. And I believe I'm going to do a combination of using breakout boards and a combination of building it directly onto my board, such as the BME 280. I will build that directly on my board. I won't use another breakout because I can get the chip so much cheaper than what it costs for the breakout. So, um, same with the Max 17043. That will also go onto my breakout board. The clock, well, I will still use the breakout board because the DS3231 chip, if you order from DigiKey or Mouser, they want six seven dollars a chip. I can get this whole board, this whole board right here from China if I wait 30 days for I think it's like two bucks, maybe a buck fifty or so each one, and I spend 10 minutes just ripping off all the other crap I don't need. So cost effectiveness is a lot easier just to have this as a plug-on for my main board I'm gonna do. Um not quite sure what I'm doing with the micro SD yet. Uh, I might actually incorporate that into my own board or not. And my breakout board I'm making for this is only so, so I can test. This will finally, if I can get this screen to work, it will be incorporated into my final board. I will not use my own breakout that I'm making. So that's my next project. Hopefully I can get an update for you in the next month or so. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And thank you very much.